Hello, my name is Dennis, and this is a video about something known as the Solar Length of Day, LOD. And it's very useful when working with plants to understand some of the deeper aspects of plant growth. To find out about it, a search term, USNO, Duration of Daylight Darkness Table, leads you to the Naval Oceanographic Portal where you can find a daily chart of the length of day throughout the year. You have to put in your latitude and longitude and their computer will print out a yearly chart of the length of day in your location. It's a very useful chart because it can help you understand some of the deeper aspects of what's going on in the natural world. So let's imagine that this little diagram up at the top is a, a leaf and the sun is shining on the leaf and one side of the leaf is hot and the other side is cold. And that hot and cold polarity in the leaves is the basis for all kinds of fluid transport in the natural world. So now we're going to move hot and cold out of the way. And let's play with the leaf form a little bit. We'll modify it. And instead of the stalk of a leaf, let's say that that is the equator. And instead of the hot side of a leaf receiving the sunlight, let's say that's the upper part of the earth in the summer. Instead of the cold part, let's say that's the cold side of the earth in the winter. What we have is a diagram of the movement of the sun above and below the equator in a yearly cycle. So the sun hits the northern hemisphere during the summer and reaches a high point and then goes down below the equator and reaches a low point in the northern hemisphere in the winter. And it creates something known as a sine wave. Now the sine wave is the form of a leaf, but it's also the form, a kind of energetic form in the atmosphere having a great deal to do with how plants are responding to the way in which the sun is moving. So let's go to the middle diagram here. We'll move that over. And this is a diagram of how we could understand this in the context of the daily increments of light and dark. So here, let's put the spring equinox at this point and say that the sun is coming above the equator and rising gradually towards the north and a little higher in the sky every day until May, where it reaches a maximum of 14 hours of daylight in May and then holds that 14 hours of daylight all the way through the summer solstice and then down into July. So for that period between May and July, there is a very, very long day. And there's a whole group of plants known as long day plants that are key to that. Those are mostly annuals and biennials. And that quality of the summer solstice, the long day plant between May and July, is a trigger for many, many things in the natural world. But then the sun begins to move back towards the equator to go to the south. And as it crosses the equator, we have the fall equinox. And the fall equinox, the sun keeps moving further and further to the south until November when the length of the day is only nine hours as opposed to 14 hours in the summer. And that nine hour period stays very similar through the winter solstice until January. So two very pronounced periods of long day and short day, long day between May and July, 14 hours of day in summer, and short day, November to January during the winter solstice where there's only nine hours of daylight. And this has a great deal to do with the way in which plants flower, the way in which they hold their leaves, etc., etc. It's a huge, huge 
force in the natural world, and it can be used as a kind of tool for understanding the way in which plants are growing. So let's take a look now at how this can be used as a way of planning for sowing and harvesting. So in this diagram, we have a pattern of how to sow cabbage in a California climate. So if you sow cabbage normally like you would in the spring, by May can often have 100 degrees out there and the cabbage is not happy. And in the fall, if you sow after the solstice, then there's not enough time for the equinox for the plants to develop. So cabbage requires a kind of strategy. Starting at 14 hours in the spring, that's in May, it says in the little diagram, prep one at 14 hours. That means I'm turning the cabbage bed and putting compost in and whatever amendments in May because I want to do another prep maybe a month later in June. And then July is June, the 21st of June is the summer solstice. And then I want to sow it still within that 14 hour cycle, so maybe July, and then finally transplant just as the 14 hours are starting to fade. So between May and July, I have two bed preps and a sowing getting ready for a July transplant. Now the reason why I want to transplant in July, even though it's probably 100 degrees out there, is that the solstice here produces vertical growth, but the equinox produces horizontal growth. What happens when we grow cabbages and take advantage of the length of day? By sowing, I have maybe six leaves in July on the cabbage, but the cabbage is going into September, and then the equinox we have horizontal growth, which is what I want in the beginning of the development of a cabbage. And through the equinox, the cabbages will grow. And then we go through the equinox in September, October, and November. Those cabbages are just forming a head. And that is a little secret of length of day known as second spring. So at the fall equinox, the horizontal growth is taken up primarily by perennial plants or fruit trees because they are forming their buds that are going to open in the spring. Now, if you have a cabbage that is growing, that second spring is a bud forming pattern in the length of day in the general realm of nature, it's the swelling of the buds in the trees that pushes the old leaves off. So in the spring, you have the beginning of the growth cycle of annuals and biennials, but in the fall at the equinox, you have the perennials that are putting a lot of energy into forming buds that are swelling. We want that cabbage that just went in the ground and survived some of the summer heat to take advantage of the swelling of the buds in second spring at the fall equinox when horizontal growth is dominant in the natural world. You, know, you might look around and say, well, where's the horizontal growth when all the leaves are falling? The leaves are falling because all the buds are swelling horizontally. So between the fall equinox and the winter solstice for two months, two and a half months, even sometimes three months, the cabbages are in the fall rains that are happening in the cooler weather, and they're very happy to have that one bud right in the middle swelling along with all the buds that are in the perennials. So this is an example how the solar length of day 
can be used to plot a cabbage sewing pattern so you can do your bed prep and you can make sure that you have the flats ready for your transplanting and da 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 you do all those things based on the growth cycles that are happening in the plant world based on the solar length of day. This has great implications for harvesting medicinal plants for starting them and growing them through their optimal sequencing. Biennials, annuals, they have different patterns having to do with the solar length of day. If you understand it, it gives you a leg up on planning for the year. So USNO, duration of daylight darkness table, will give you a whole cycle of the year for your own locale so you can begin to use it. I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks for watching.